All right, so creating screws and the threading for a screw can be pretty problematic. I'm going to show you a fast and efficient way of doing that in this video, except you're going to need an add-on for it called Machine Tools. So you have to go to links in the description, download it, install it. It takes a little bit of time to set it up properly, especially if it's going to work for you. So I made a video prior about that. Go check it out. Uh, there will be a link in the description. But let's go ahead and take a look at one little feature real quick. And if we go to add-ons and type machine tools, you got to install it first. It's spelt with a three, by the way. There's a little feature called thread. Easily turn cylinder faces into thread. All right, you're going to need that. We're going to delete the default cube. Press shift A, create a cylinder. Doesn't matter. The cylinder size it doesn't matter it just needs a single face running down like this not have a bunch of little cross sections right okay so we got two cylinders we're going to work on both of these so i'm going to take them both and go into edit mode it's very simple what we're about to do i'm going to use face selection hit alt click select all the faces around it we can right click and do machine tools add thread just like that we have this but it gets a little bit better we can adjust the amount of threads we can change the depth, right? And we can change the fade amount. See here at the top, it's fading. Cool, right? Okay. With that in mind, you can also adjust whether they're pitched up, pitched down. You can also do this one like so. Thickness, spacing. And you can also flip it top and bottom. The top is different than the bottom, just so you know. Okay. Going to do the same thing over here. Just right click, add thread. Oop. It may not do it. Oh, there it goes. Okay. The only difference here is I don't want any depth. And I'm not going to touch any of the other settings. We'll come back to this one. Let's get to this one. All right. So to fix this, so they can subdivide. This edge here, dissolve it, press Control X, get rid of it. Hit Alt, select this loop, unselect this edge, Control X, dissolve it. Down here at the bottom, there is no edge to dissolve. We need to grab this face, press E, extrude it down, select that edge, dissolve it. Select all this, unselect that, dissolve it. Okay. can actually just select all of that and press X, control X and dissolve it. Okay. I was, I don't know why I selected it anyways. So here we go. What we're going to be doing is just cutting out with the knife tool. That's it. Press K. Cut this shape just like that. Connect it to this corner, connect it to this corner. You're going to do the same thing for this next one. Except it's smaller, of course. And you're doing the same thing. Connect it out. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to do it here at the bottom as well. Try to go about halfway, I think, works best. And for this one, it's just a little bit. It doesn't have to go too far. So you're just right clicking to end the cut and keep moving on. You can see I haven't finished them yet though. So I need to actually hit space bar to finish them out. All right. So once you're done, hit space bar, it's cut up. There we go. Now, here's where the fun begins. I can alt click, it selects right to here. I can hit alt shift. Click, and it selects all the way through. We can bevel this. Control B, bevel it. Mouse wheel up once. Go into object mode. Cool. Now, let's delete this bottom and this top face real quick temporarily. All right. We need to add a subdivision surface modifier. So you could use the modifier list. Go to subdivision surface, or just hit Control Three, and you'll see it adds it. Okay. And if we take a 
close, close look. Everything's faceted right now. We can shade it smooth. There's a little bit of a distortion going on on it, but it's not too bad. I like to fix that, so I'm going to switch from global to normal. And with the normal, you'll see that I can actually move out on that edge. I'm going to move this one out, and then I'm going to move this one out just a tiny little bit so that it does this number. Okay. And that's pretty much it. You could try to tighten this up a little bit if you need to. Just by selecting all of it. I'm going to use cursor selector by hitting C and left clicking and right clicking. Um, you would want to switch back to global. You could try doing this number where you just scale in a little bit. Uh, that might work out a little bit better for you. And you can also try moving this around again. Now remember machine tools has a shift mouse button number four I forgot what number it is uh, but you can do active individual local global normal all this stuff so if I do active so it's kind of a pre setup for all that so it's a little bit faster now so if you see this popping up that's what's going on I'm gonna move this one in a little bit that one in. Let's see what happens there all right so pretty much distortion free for the most part can be one of the best topology solutions for this that you can have. I'm going to press E, E, S, E, S, Control F, grid fill this. I can offset it and align it with the global axes here. Let's go back a second. Let's use global, Control F, grid fill. There we go. Let's go ahead and line it up. Negative one, there we go. So you could always do an E and S, an E, Z, E, S, and do that number, right? Select this loop, hit Alt-Z to get in the X-ray mode that quick. Alt-Shift, Alt-Shift, select all those, right? Turn this off in edit mode. Hit that little icon there. Control-Shift-R, E, and you can do this like that. Control-Shift-R and E. Sometimes it doesn't always work out too well. Here you can see in this corner. It's probably a bad idea. I'm going to mess that up a little bit. I'm just going to slide that. Hitting G twice. Back down a little bit. That would be wrong, actually. We're going to merge it to that one. So M, merge. At last. All right. So that should have been good. All right. So all you have to do now is model the uh, the type of screw that would go in there, right? The socket or whatever. Be an Allen Phillips flathead. All right. So we're going to do the same thing over here. It's pretty much the same deal. All right. This edge, dissolve it all the way around. Dissolve. Down here at the bottom. Extrude. Dissolve. Same process. We got a knife cut real quick. I'm going to go a little bit quicker on this one. But a lot of times screws, when they're machined out, Sometimes they leave a shank that's left over. I think it's called a shank. But that little extra bit of metal is flush with the threads. You can't do that with the other one over there. It's a little bit too challenging. You have to start with it like this. There's no thread sticking out. Alright. I mean, you could you could actually do it on the other one too, but... This way is going to work a little bit better. All right. So we're loop selecting here. So Alt click, Alt shift click, and you got to select this little end. All right. Just like that, we're going to the bottom just to select the other end. All right. There's a selection method select loops, 
loop inner region. Like that, like that. What we could do is we could press S. Make sure we're in a global here. Yeah. S Shift Z. We can push this in. A little bit different than the other ones, right? Instead of it coming out, it went inwards. It's easier for me to visualize it when it's not sticking out already, but it's basically the same thing. All right. So I want to push it into the desired depth I want, but this doesn't fade. That's the that's the big thing, right? It doesn't fade. You'll have to do the top and the bottom, but you select that single face there. Hit Control and just click, kind of select all the way around or halfway around, whatever you want. Press Shift H hides everything else we'll select this face hit the tilde key view selected okay so we want to move this but if we move that it's only going to be that if we turn on proportional edit you'll see that it does this number so we might want to do connected only so that it only works on that side it doesn't affect this one yet All right but we still want it to work off the center of this which we don't have set up 3D cursor is pretty useful for this. It's over here right now. We want it on the origin point of this one if it's in the center. We can press Shift S and we can do a uh, cursor to select it just like that. Now, we can go back into edit mode. Watch this. We can switch over to 3D cursor. We'll take that. If I press S, Shift Z, I can scale like this. And I can also mouse wheel up so I can do this number, right? Cool. Here's the trick. We can't tell how far we got to go out. So we can go into object mode and then into edit mode, back and forth. All right, so S, Shift Z. We're going to pull it out. See how far we went out? It's a little bit too far. S, Shift Z. Let's pull it back in a little bit. Hold Shift to move a little bit slower. That's Pretty close to right on the money, but that's not what we want. We want it slightly inwards, ever so slightly, something like that. Okay. And we got to do this to the bottom as well. So we can press Alt H. Alt H will unhide all that. Let's quickly do that. Go all the way around here. Press Shift H. Grab it. We don't even have to reset the cursor, it's still good. Push it out. Try it again. Push it out. Oop. Push it in. There we go. That's good enough for me. Now, in edit mode, Alt H, unhide everything, grab here. Um, Alt Shift Select, grab all the way through. Control B and bevel. There you go. Now, Control 2 or Control 3 in this case. Subdivide. And turn it off in edit mode. We're going to inset, hit Control or hold Control while insetting, and you can extrude like that. Go ahead and inset. Oh, you know what? Let's not do that yet. Let's just delete faces. This would be the top, right? So turn off proportional edit and go ahead and drag that up. You'll see this stretches up with that. So we need a support loop here. Kind of hold it in place. And But overall, that's about as good as it's going to get for the top. Okay. Here at the bottom, a lot of times this starts in like a little tapered area. So you could always use a proportional edit. Mouse wheel down until you get just the areas you want. Something like that, maybe. I'm going to hit X, delete. And I'm going to do a E, Z, just a tiny little bit. I'll scale it, scale it in a little bit, too. Oh, go back to global and median, not cursor no more. I'm just going to scale it in a little bit like this. Okay. I'm going to inset this, but I'm going to press O. I'm going to outset just a little bit. 
Loop cut, control R. Select here, E, S, control F, grid fill. Then line it up. We should have a nice little bottom section there. Might want to just kind of bend that a little bit. Sometimes this doesn't move real well with the uh, proportional edit, so you'll have to tweak it, just move it manually. Usually it works out all right, but anyways, we're going to do an ES, EZ, same as we did on the other one. You just run this down a little bit. I want to bevel these. A little bit of a softer appearance, which is good for normal maps if you're trying to bake this. Okay. And there we go. I'm going to grid fill this. This is where the fun begins. We can go ahead and line these up. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. maybe we won't. It is not aligned. I thought it was aligned. Yeah, it's, this is why you want it aligned right here. So I can go ahead and do that. I'm going to go all the way to this one. Using machine tools, Alt A, align left, align right, or align right and align left. Whatever the case is, whatever you need. Holding control to make those quick, easy selections. We're going to do inset, press O, do outset, like so. Now we're going to inset, press O to turn off, outset. We're going to hit control and just drop it down to wherever we need it. Press S to scale it in. Get an inset again. Just like that. Hit Alt, click, inset. Just like that. We have a screw. Not as complicated as you probably thought. It just takes a little while to find a good tutorial that teaches you how to do it like this, in this manner. You can always tweak these a little bit further, see what you can end up with. It's really not that hard. Uh, you can certainly try scaling in a little bit more, perhaps. Uh, maybe using proportional edit to move it up, or whatever else the case may be. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and it uh, helps you out. So thanks for watching. Take care. I'll check you out next time.